Hey everyone, well it's December 31st, 2015 and it was exactly two years ago that I moved Moonshine to Shelter Island Marina and started my life as a liveaboard. Although I've owned the boat now for over four years, I never bought Moonshine with the intention of living aboard, but sometimes things happen in life that present you with an opportunity to try something new, and I took it. By no means am I suffering by living on a boat. I have a heater, I have hot water for doing dishes and having showers, I have a three burner stove and an oven, I have power, I even have Wi-Fi and cable. So 2015 was a fun year. I had projects, racing, cruising, meeting new people, and I even threw in a little road trip. So why don't we take a quick look and see some of the highlights. If someone said, hey Alfie, you're getting a little bit OCD about this hull and keel, I don't think I would have much of an argument. One of the things I really haven't talked about during the haul out series is the head systems upgrade. Uh, that'll be the part two video. But I will upload that after I'm done this series. But here is a little sneak peek. One of the things I'm not going to miss about being on the hard is going up and down this ladder. I couldn't even count how many times I do that in a day. While well, old Moonshine's starting to look like she'll be pretty fast in the water, and I hope that's going to be the case in the 2015 Round Salt Spring Race next month. But she'll never be as quick as the little Abarth. So it's race day and the crew is here. Just went to the skippers meeting. We're running the course counterclockwise. Seven knots. Seven three. In the dark. Hey Mads, were you worried about gaining some weight this trip? Oh, not anymore. Normally I'm a bit anxious about anchoring in my boat, but uh, here about Alfie's boat, I slept like a rock last night due to the super heavy chain and anchor. So we're on our way, and it's a little bit of overcast today and not a lot of wind, so we're just going to motor for the first uh, little while here. And we do need to get through Gabriola Passage by 2.30, I think it was. I'll double check that on my uh, chart.
about across the Strait of Georgia and getting close to Gabriel the Passage. We sailed probably about halfway across I think today and once our speeds dropped below two knots over ground it was time to get the motor going again in time to get through the passage before the tide turns on us. On the plus side, after the wind died down a little, the sun came out. Well, it's been good. Bye bye, you guys. Okay. Ciao. We'll see you again. And safe travels. Thank you. Bye, James. Au revoir. Au revoir. Thanks, Ben. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. Well, we've left James' boat, and I'm really going to miss that guy. Awesome person and super glad I met him. It's been really nice getting to know him over the last couple months and I really hope I'll see him again one day. For the third leg of our journey we'll be doing that much dreaded thing called walking. My feet are still a little bit sore after our big tour of Vancouver but uh, it's not all that bad and I'm sure it's not too far from the ferry terminal to Vancouver Co that we're going. Ah, it's <laughs> ferry terminal to Vancouver Go. <laughs> ferry terminal to Vancouver Co. <laughs> Canoe Co. Canoe Co. Co. Okay. Vancouver Co. Check. Canoe Co. Canoe Co. Okay. The ferry terminal back there and to Vancouver Co. Where we go. <laughs> God damn Vancouver Co! <laughs> the ferry terminal back there? What? What? I can't stop laughing. I'm, I'm expecting you to say Vancouver Co! I'm just waiting oh. for it now. Jesus. Pull yourself together, man. <laughs> well, if you hadn't said Vancouver Co! 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 Like 20 times. times. I wouldn't be expecting to hear it. Oh. We're almost there. Yeah, you that's, that's gonna <laughs> suck. Uh, okay. This, this is all on you, Alfie.
How is it, Shay? Good. Are we on course? Kind of. I wanted to say thanks to one of my viewers. Uh, I can't remember who it is because I don't have the internet right now. But I did a video a while back on the jack lines on my boat. And at least one or two of the viewers suggested shortening up my lanyard by just looping it down to the jack line and back. So that's what I've done and it's much shorter and I really like it a lot more than I, what I was doing before. I was just attaching the shackle uh, to the jack line and then one end to my harness, but it was quite long. So thanks for those comments and it is a much better setup. Check out Nanaimo's Silly Boat Regatta. funny but there was a lot of chirping going on around the boat and we're out in the middle of the bay so it seemed kind of unusual to hear all that chirping but it turns out there's all these little I think they're barn swallows roosting on the railings on the boat right up near the v-berth so that was kind of neat to see they're all sunning themselves up there We made it to Victoria and the kids are really excited to be here again. Awesome place to come visit by boat for all the cruisers out there that want to uh, come to a big city on an island. Once we got a few things organized like paying for moorage, hooking up the power, we decided to just stick close to the boat for the rest of the day. I think we were still recovering a bit from the first day of travel which was pretty long. And we have two more days in Victoria, so we weren't in a big hurry to get out and start walking around. One of the nice things about staying at the Inner Harbor is that you can enjoy a lot of the activity that occurs on the causeway right from the comfort of your own boat. This will be our fourth year attending the rendezvous. 
And although it's a modest sized event, I really do enjoy looking at a few other CNCs that range in age and size when compared to my boat. And once we got the boat all settled into her spot, we're able to sit and enjoy watching the other boats come in. All the clips you just saw are from videos I posted in 2015, and if you've missed one or two of them, I hope you'll go back and take a look at the entire video. Some people have asked if this boat is big enough, or is it too small to live aboard full time. It's 34 feet overall, and it has an 11 foot beam. It's a traditional layout, it's an early 80s boat, so it doesn't have an aft cabin, it's just a quarter berth in the back and a uh, settee on either side with your table in the middle, V-berth up front. And really overall, this boat uh, suits me very well. I can have company over, I can have my kids over, I can cook, and uh, I can manage it well on my own. That's another thing you have to consider with the size of boat you have is, can you sail it on your own? You have to consider things like uh, moorage costs, cost of the boat, of course these all increase the larger you go. So 34 is a nice size uh, and it sort of meets most of the criteria that I just mentioned in terms of handling the boat, moorage costs, um, cost of the boat initially. It's all pretty manageable. I think the best thing about living aboard the boat full-time is that I feel really at home I have a huge passion for sailing and being on the water and the boat's always moving a little. My walk from the parking lot down to the boat is always nice. The dock moves a little and it's an active neighborhood or environment as opposed to just parking your car in the garage and shutting the garage door and walking upstairs. It just seems more static. So I think just how alive things feel in the marina and on the boat is probably what I enjoy most about it. Probably the best thing about 2015 for me wasn't one specific moment. It was actually all the comments on the YouTube channel, messages and comments on the Facebook page, emails on the web page, and meeting people, sometimes meeting people randomly while I was out cruising or here at the marina. That's probably what I appreciated most about 2015, was all those put together. Of course, uh, Cruising Canada with Mads over at Sail Life when he came and visited Vancouver, and we did that uh, surprise video series for you. That was awesome. Another person I've gotten to know a bit better through emails and messages is Drake over at Drake Paragon and uh, on YouTube. Uh, he and Monique put that awesome Happy Holidays message together for everyone and got six channels to collaborate together and all remotely and put that message out to everyone which uh, is really awesome and shows how great this community is. Well, January 2016 marks another big milestone in my life and it was exactly 30 years ago that I was diagnosed with cancer and given a 50-50 chance to live. I had three and a half years of chemo ahead of me and I was 15 years old so you know you're at a already a difficult time in your life but uh, yeah it's kind of I thought I'd just mention that because it's sort of a uh, 30 years of 
cancer free, I guess, or since the day I was diagnosed. It was the first week of January uh, in 1986, so I was 15 years old. But uh, yeah, here I am, enjoying life and enjoying my lifestyle. Well, for now, the plan is to keep living aboard Moonshine, and I'm excited to see what 2016 has in store for me. It's uh, been a lot of fun so far, so I really appreciate everyone that uh, follows the channel and comments, and uh, hope to meet more of you in the upcoming year, or at least connect with you if you're uh, too far to meet in person. And uh, yeah, so fair winds, happy new year, and we'll see you on the next video.